Hello everybody and welcome. Let's talk about the problem bulbs on interview bit. We're given n bulbs in total, which are either on or off, represented by 1 and 0 respectively. The condition mentioned in the question says that turning on the ith bulb causes all of the remaining bulbs on the right hand side of it to flip, which means that all of the bulbs on the right hand side which were 1 will become zeros and vice versa. The goal of this problem is to find the minimum number of switches to turn all of the bulbs on. The constraints mention that the n, the number of bulbs, can be between 1 and 10 to the power 5. And a of i can be 0 or 1, representing that the bulb or the bit we are looking at currently can either be 0 or 1. Alright, let's take a test case and try to work out a solution. In the case of 101, this is the test case we're going to start off with. We will also set the initial cost to zero. We'll say that uh, this cost is going to keep a track of the number of flips or the number of switches that we require to convert everything to ones. On the bottom right hand side is the logic we are going to use, which is already mentioned in the question. The question says that if the bulb is on, well, that's great. We'll just continue on. But if the bulb is zero, that is, if the current bit we are looking at is zero, then well, we have to increase the cost by one and flip everything on the right hand side of it. All right. So let's try to simulate and see what happens. So this is the first element that we get. The first bit is one. So we'll continue on. Now, in this case, we get the bit as zero. What does this mean? This means that we have to increase the cost by one and we have to flip all of the bits on the right hand side of it including the current one. So the zero becomes one and the one on the right hand side of it becomes a zero. Pretty simple, right? So now this is the area that we are currently working with. What about this third element now? Well, since this is a zero, we have to go to the else condition. The else condition says that the cost should be increased by one for converting this zero to a one. And then we'll flip all of the bits on the right hand side of it. Since there are none, we don't have to worry about it anymore. And we have the final array as 111. At this point, we note the cost, which is equal to 2, and we'll return this as the final answer. Now, let's try to analyze the time and space complexity of the solution. The space complexity is order of 1 since we only ever store this cost variable on the top right. However, the time complexity is a bigger issue. It's order of n squared. See, because for every single bit, as we're iterating over the array, we'll take order of n time. And for every single bit, we might have to do another special operation of converting everything on the right hand side of it to be zero or one, basically flipping that around. So that's order of n time to iterate over the bits and order of n time again, if the bit is a zero. So that's order of n square time, worst case. Now, this was the naive solution and we were able to uh, write down the naive solution just by using what was given in the question. However, can we optimize this? The optimization of the solution depends on one single logic. There's just one thing that you need to know to optimize the solution. All right, let's take a bigger case and try to work out and simulate what is going to happen. In this case, we have 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. We see that the first bit is zero. So what do we do? Remember, we went in the else case. We encounter a certain cost, in this case represented by the arrow. And because of this cost, we were able to convert this zero to a one. And we have to flip everything on the right hand side of it. So the one becomes zero and the zeros become one. So we have one zero one, double zero one, double zero. Now in this case, we encounter a zero again. Well, that's kind of a painful thing to do. As we already noted, the time complexity is out of n squared. Uh, so since we have this zero, let's go ahead and convert this zero to a one, encounter a cost of one, and convert everything on the right hand side of it to be flipped. So the ones become zeros and the zeros become ones again. Now there's something going on. There's something very interesting in this slide. I want you to pause and ponder what's going on. There's one small little detail that you have to figure out. All right. If you place both of these side by side, you'll realize that both of these 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 have this yellow part of the string repeated. Both of them have this yellow part of the array repeated. Now, what does that mean? 
Well, this means that if you do two flips represented by these two blue arrows that we show, if you do two flips, everything on the right hand side of it becomes flipped by once and then gets flipped again. In essence, they get reverted back to their original states. Think about this, this makes sense mathematically as well. Say that we are looking at an array and we are looking at a random bit in the array, somewhere in the middle. At this point, let's say that the cost is some cost variable that we have stored over here, represented in red. Now we'll ask the question, hey, is the cost even or odd? Is the number of flips we have done even or odd? Because if we have done even number of flips, the bid remains as is. The bids get reverted back to its original states. So the B becomes B. It remains as is. However, if the cost is odd, we have to flip the bid. That's because it has been flipped an odd number of times. So 1 becomes 0 and then becomes 1 and then perhaps becomes 0 again. So if the cost is odd, we have to flip the bit. Now then what? Well, if we can figure out this part, well, we can just write down what we did before. If the current bit we are looking at is 1 now, we'll just continue. Else, we'll increase the cost by 1. Alright, let's try to code this up. So here's the code written and we are of course going to start off with the cost equals to zero and we'll return the cost at the end. Now we'll say for every single bit in the array, we'll iterate over all the bits in the array. We'll say if the cost modulo two is equal to zero, that is if this current bit has been flipped an even number of times, well, B equals to B. B remains as is. Else B equals to not B. That is if the bit was one, it becomes zero. And if it was zero, it becomes one. And now we can again ask the question as before, we can say that if this current flipped bit is equal to one, then what? Well, just continue as is. And in the else condition, we'll increase the cost by one. And once we're done with this iteration, we finally will have the cost. So you can realize that this takes order of n time complexity where n is the number of bulbs and it still takes order of one space since we are not storing anything other than the cost variable. All right, so this is it for the solution to the problem, bulbs on interview bid.